You might have seen a previous video that shows the internal workings of the energy zone unit, but just in case, I'll skip through them quite quickly now and just explain what is going on inside. Before we start to show how this system works, this system would be where you have two solid fuel stoves and a heat pump, but giving by far more control into how you want to use the energy being created to either prioritize hot water or central heating. So the energy zone unit has uh, in this configuration has three connections on the left hand side a flow input with a bypass arriving back out of here or a flow input from the right hand side bypass arriving out of here and a cold return to catch the water coming back from any zones like these are four zones zone one zone two zone three zone four if required i'll show you in this example what we have so is the potential for a flow to come in here water would bypass around this pl deflector plate behind it and in front of it, travel beyond the zones and offer itself to the zone. So if there's a pump operating here or here, it can take the hottest water. Any surplus water would pass through and go back to wherever it came from, either here or here. If the zones are working and cold water is coming back because the radiators or the underflow circuit or whatever is, is drawing the energy away, then the water would arrive down to the lowest chamber. So inside in the top chamber, when heat is being delivered in, it collects uh, any heat as it passes through um, and so our hot water is available for the zones to operate. But if the returns are working because the zones are calling, then the coldest water in the system will be collected in this chamber and that would be offered back to say condensing boilers or heat pumps or whatever is necessary. So even though we have high temperature water coming in from the stove with the return going back and the bypass return, we might have the coldest water going back to our heat pump or condensing boiler. If we look at both together, you can see that there's a natural stratification situation. Hottest water will collect on top as it moves through and the colder water coming back from the zones would be available on the bottom to be drawn away by the low temperature required boiler like condensing boilers or heat pumps. If we introduce a stove on the left hand side, you can see by taking a vertical rising flow pipe from the top of the stove being pushed as quickly as possible into a, a vertical position and then uh, rising from uh, across any uh, horizontal runs again to rise up into the energy zone. It's very important that you get caused the vertical rise as quickly as possible with any stove and it's also very important that any horizontal pipework would rise across towards the high point being the energy zone unit. So it's the necessary to make sure that this rise is maximized. This applies to the flow and to the return pipe from the stove. If we introduce a stove on the other side, exactly the same situation occurs. Rise as quickly as possible up into a horizontal uh, pipework and then on any horizontal run, again have it rising towards the high point to vent any air in the system and also to cause the thermosiphon to work properly. So you see here, we've introduced a second coil because there is a second uh, solid fuel appliance. In this situation, so each of the uh, uh, solid fuel stoves has its own coil, which and therefore the same volume of water can be used as a heat leak from both stoves. The size of the cylinder and the size of the stored volume of water will matter. And that's something that has to be calculated or decided on at a design part of the job. It's not covered in this video. If you have an open system, you obviously will have to have an open storage tank in the attic which will contain the stored water, a mains feed in to top up that water, a cold feed out into the system which would go through a heat lock loop to make sure no hot, no hot water will inadvertently rise in to the tank and heat the contents of the tank which would cause evaporation and therefore cause more fresh water to be introduced. Fresh water into an open system is, is always a problem because it will bring oxygen in with the water and that oxygen will affect, detrimentally affect the iron parts, the ferrous parts such as radiators, manifold unit, the, any oil boilers or whatever made of iron parts in the system like pumps. The vent situation is that any water traveling in from this side or this side will always collect at this point and that's exactly where the vent is. So any air will be immediately vented out by the, by the energy zone manifold. There is less than 
or 75 millimeters or less between the vent point and the cold feed fill point so there's no potential for pitching there's no extra pressure here compared to here so there's very little chance of the water rising up and pitching over the system but if there was ever a danger that pitching might be a problem because you can't get your expansion high enough then it's an idea to consider putting in a T and a non-return valve in the, like in this situation if water is ever rising up this pipe it would put pressure on the gate of the non-return valve the water would go through the valve and down and back to where it came from and not rise up the expansion. The hottest water here will be trapped above the heat lock loop which should be as deep as possible. This, the further you go down with this loop the better uh, to make sure that there's no um, chance of heat rising whatsoever into that tank. So the expansion and cold feed pipe will work with perfectly unhindered and there's cold water available always to top up the system should that need occur. So now we look at the dual coil cylinder and just suppose we say that the stove on the right hand side is a bit more powerful than what primaries might be able to take away all of the heat uh, because the stove might be say too big or, or, or fire potential too big, heat potential too big. So instead of having just a, a non-pumped circuit we could introduce an injector T along with a pump. What this will mean if the pump is not running the hot water would be at this point it would be uh, the non-return valve will stop any inadvertent water circuit slipping by the cylinder and just drifting down because the, the water wouldn't have the potential to open this non-return valve so it would carry on as before deliver its heat to the coil and then carry it on back but if the return pipe ever goes above say 55 degrees then a stat would turn on this pump in that situation water would be pulled down by the pump and be pushed open the non-return valve and pushed down to the injector T. The injector T has a smaller tube or pipe inside the T which this T can be made by the plumber or it can be purchased. But the idea being that the pump will be forcing water through a narrower chamber or narrower pipe and when it does it increases velocity and when it injects out at this point it will create a vacuum here by the Bernoulli principle or a Venturi principle here so that will cause a suction effect on this pipe which will make the cylinder heat even better and at the same time the pump will force this water down along the pipe and cause much more water to travel through the primary circuit and in, out into the solid fuel um, heat exchanger so therefore this will work by far faster because this pump is operating than this one the choice is how big is the solid fuel stove and how long are the runs it might be necessary to put the stove or to put that pump depending on your uh, appliance manufacturer's conditions always never comply with the appliance manufacturer's conditions now if we wanted to introduce a heat pump at this point in time we have an opportunity to introduce it bringing the heat in a, uh, a flow connection that's available here T1 and the return going back from here so if we put in a heat pump, the heat pump would be extracting the air, the heat from the air outside the building, converting it into a water based heat with this plate exchanger and delivering that heat into the manifold flow on top, return going back to the heat pump from the optimal location which is the return port or the lowest side port uh, which is L3 in this example of the uh, manifold. So if we look at what's happening with the heat pump, you'll see we have two parts. We have the outside, which is made up of two different heat collectors or heat pump put together, heat pump apparatus, with refrigerant cycles coming, or circuits coming from both of those, the top one and the lower one. This refrigerant would be pushed through the compressor, would increase the temperature of the refrigerant gas accordingly, and that high temperature refrigerant gas would be put through a plate exchanger within the unit Likewise with the bottom one if it's operating, operating it will pull the refrigerant gas, push it through the exchanger. So all of this high temperature hot gas will be passing here and then the water will come down, cool the gas, strip away the heat and deliver the heat back up and into the energy zone manifold. So we have a situation now where the solid fuel stoves can work on their own or the heat pump can work or they can all work together. As long as the return water temperature is below the temperature required uh, limit set for the return of the heat pump, the heat pump can work away perfectly along with the solid fuel systems. 
So we see we have a perfectly safe primary circuit from the right hand stove to the manifold and upwards uh, in through, the, uh, through the manifold down through the coil and back and likewise here up into the manifold down through the coil and back and we have the heat pump ready to deliver heat in taking the coldest water coming back from any system return as we move. So if we look and we want to put in a buffer that might be used to collect heat from the heat pump or to collect extraordinary heat that might be made available by the stoves where say zones have come up to temperature but there's no heat needed that heat could be collected by a control system causing one of those pumps to operate down here and those pumps have two functions there's a pump and a valve pump and a valve this pump is facing out of the unit and will pull cold water from the end of the buffer out and so pull hot water down through the first zone pipe down and fill the buffer and this pump is facing downwards and will pull cold water down from the lower chamber and push hot water that's stored in the buffer out so you can see that we have two options we can either heat the buffer or we can uh, cause the um, buffer to deliver its heat if you look at the zone pumps you're going to see that this valve would have to open for this pump to pull the cold water out and this pump would our valve would have to open for this pump to pull the cold water in if i'm pulling cold in i'm pushing hot out of the buffer and if i'm pulling cold out of the buffer i'm pulling hot water in so the choice is mine do i want to heat the buffer and store the heat or do i want to use the heat within the buffer so if we want to introduce a radiator zone onto that scenario we could have a flow and return leaving these two connections here pumping the hottest water down across and down into our radiators let's have a closer look behind at exactly how that works so the radiator circuit would be taking the hottest water through the pump down and across and down into feed whatever radiators are downstairs this could be skirting radiators it could be an underflow circuit convective circuit makes no difference this is where the flow and return would, might come from for that circuit the return would come up and be collected in the lower chamber of the uh, energy zone unit so now if we now want to consider putting in say an underflow heating circuit we would take our flow again from the hottest water come down into the manifold and it's at this point in the manifold that you'll see that the flow and return are only affected by the pump on the manifold and there's no pump at the energy zone manifold the reason is it doesn't need the pump here if the mixing valve pump arrangement below at the heat pump uh, or sorry at the underflow manifold needs heat then very simply it will draw it down to the flow pipe through the mixing valve and wrong but if the pump is already satisfied with regard to the amount of heat energy in the system it will simply take this path through the floor back from the floor and round again as the mixing valve opens it will open this port and draw more heat down and in that uh, fashion the cold water will be put back up into the coldest chamber of the energy zone unit and be heated by whatever boiler is being called at that time if we want to put in an upstairs radiator circuit we could do it by simply putting a pump that would pump down and across to the radiator circuit and carry on to whatever other radiators we have our heat output and the return would come back and be brought up and put back in through the non-return valve again into the lowest chamber again making the coldest water in the system available for whatever heating equipment is uh, best to use <clears throat> so looking at the upstairs system you'll see so pump and non-return valve the reason for the non-return valves is if the pump isn't working you don't want to take a chance that any heat might start to drift backwards down through the system so the non-return valve here is simply a precaution to make sure there's no inadvertent heat leak out into a, a zone that isn't required at that given time you would have non-return valves on any zone circuit now so therefore we can now look and see that we have all of the attributes that should be in a perfectly designed simple to operate system we have the heat pump taking the coldest possible water 
which makes that uh, COP or efficiency as high as is absolute possible. We have the solid fuel systems with open primary circuits, no obstruction, working perfectly down through the respective cylinder coils and providing heat energy to the flow chamber to be drawn away by an upstairs radiator circuit or a downstairs radiator circuit or an underfloor circuit. Very simple system, very easy to understand, very easy to control. Contact us if we can help you with your designs and are to talk about how you might like to go about your control mechanisms. This is our area of expertise. We'd like to think we could help you with your systems. This has been brought to you by Energy Awareness, the makers and distributors, suppliers of the Energy Zone products. Energy Awareness are uh, the contact information is on the website. Please contact us if we can help you in any way and hopefully you found this video informative. Thank you.